Have you ever been out in the mountains on a cold, clear night and gazed up at the star-studded sky, glittering like diamonds scattered against a black velvety cloth? When I look up at the night sky, a feeling of awe and wonder overwhelms my soul as I stand there gazing at the universe millions of light years away. Are we here on planet Earth by chance, or is there a creator who cares about our lonely blue planet at the edge of the Milky Way galaxy? If we go on a journey back in time, when the Earth was silent, dark and void, we will find our answer. Once upon a time, God's Spirit moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And immediately there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness and there was evening and morning the first day. Ah, the wonders of creation. What did God have in mind for the earth as he created his masterpiece? The crown jewel of the creation fiat was mankind. Created to love and be loved. The earth in all its stunning beauty was created for the enjoyment of Adam and Eve and all those who would be born on the earth. On the seventh day of creation, God gave humanity a precious gift. The gift of time. Time to spend in nature and with him. Apart from the burdens of daily life, he marked off the seventh day each week as holy time and created the weekly cycle the world still recognises today. The book of Genesis says, Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. He placed this day of rest into the DNA of the first week to be remembered by every human born on planet Earth from that time forward. Since God created this special day in a perfect world, it makes sense that it is even more important for us today. Now, Fast forward in time 6,000 years. By now, sadly, most of the world has forgotten their creator. Each week, people rush on, never so much as lifting their eyes to heaven to remember him on his holy day. And still, he waits. Meet a typical housewife, age 36. She slaves away seven days a week, running a taxi service for her kids, cooking meals for the family, doing the laundry, cleaning the house, and shopping at the grocery store to buy food for the family. Wait! She doesn't have to work seven days a week. God gave her a day off for every six days she works. What did she say? She doesn't know. No one told the poor stressed out mother about the day of rest. And husbands, this is good news for you too. One day a week, your wife can't give you a honey-do list. That's right. Honey? I need you to take out the garbage, mow the lawn and fix that hole in the fence. Oh, and be sure to wash and vacuum the car, it's filthy. When you get that done, you can go and play with the boys. No dear, not today. I don't have to. God said so. I'll mend the fence tomorrow. I'm spending time with God, with you and with the kids today. Okay, guys. When you think about it, it's rather difficult to have quality time with your wife when your face is buried in your computer or when you're spending the whole day watching football games at home. She needs you. She loves you. She wants to spend time with you. Remember when you were dating how much you wanted to be with her? Since God is love, he wants quality time with you and me too. This isn't possible when we're working seven days a week or we're so occupied with doing our own thing we don't give God our time on his time. Now, here's the best part for me. All those things that tug at my mind during the week, the things I have to get done, well, they don't burden me for a full 24 hours. I'm free, really free, from the cares of life on the seventh day. Okay, it sounds great so far, but does it matter which day you take off each week? I mean, all days are the same, aren't they? Well, not exactly. God said the seventh day was the Sabbath, not the fourth, the fifth, or the first. I mean, your birthday's your birthday. The day matters, right? I was a young child when I first discovered the seventh day was the Sabbath. I remember sitting on my bed, reading my Bible, and there it was, in black and white, as plain as day. The words, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. I was confused. The seventh day? I got up and went to the calendar hanging on my bedroom wall and, tracing my finger along the week, I got to the end and sure enough Saturday was the seventh day. My mind began to wonder, why then do we worship on Sunday? I thought it was the Lord's Day. My friend said, no one really knows what day is the original seventh day of the week. But I thought, well, then how can we know what day we're supposed to celebrate Easter? My mum said that we worship on Sunday to honour the Lord's resurrection. And when I asked our pastor about the text I read, he said, My dear girl, we are no longer under the law, but under grace. The Sabbath was for the Jews. Don't trouble your little head over it. I was thinking, but the Bible did say the seventh day. But I still pondered it in my heart. That was many years ago. It took time for those seeds that were planted in my heart as a young child to bear fruit in my life. The fourth commandment is at the heart of God's moral law. You know, don't kill, don't steal, don't covet, don't take God's name in vain. If grace sets us free from keeping the fourth commandment, we must also be free to kill, steal, covet, commit adultery and take God's name in vain. Why would the only commandment that says remember be the only commandment that is okay to forget? And why would Jesus come and die for our sins, which is breaking the law, only to set us free to break the law? Paul wrote in Romans, do we then overthrow the law by our faith? By no means, on the contrary, we uphold the law. It seems if the law was nailed to the cross when Jesus died, he could have just set aside the law beforehand and spared himself the cruel death. Where there is no law, there is no sin. Problem solved. You can't get a speeding ticket when there are no laws regulating how fast you drive. The fact that the Sabbath is part of the other nine moral laws means it must be binding upon all people as well. Now, since God is the originator of the Sabbath and the lawmaker, only he has the authority and power to change the day we honour him as creator and redeemer. Search if you will, but there is not a single text in the entire Bible where God commands us to worship on another day. Jesus said, I am Lord of the Sabbath. And it's true. He created it in the beginning, kept it his whole life and expects us to honour it as well. How do we know? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. All ten. James said, if you break one of the commandments, you really have broken them all. Why? Because they are based on love. The Sabbath is like the wedding ring people wear on their hand when they get married. It says, I belong to him, he belongs to me. When people see the ring, they know you have joined yourself in a sacred pledge to always love your spouse. In the same way, the Sabbath is a sign of our allegiance to the one who created and redeemed us. Moses said in Exodus 31, Surely my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Do you love Jesus? Why not enter into his rest? Can you think of any reason you wouldn't want to worship on the only day he asked you to remember? The day he created for a perfect world. A day carved in stone written by the hand of Jehovah himself. Something to think about.